All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to use uh, Cura for our Ultimakers. We have two Ultimakers uh, named Ult Ultimaker 1, Ultimaker 2. They're basically they're the S5s. You can look up the details on them. Um, we use, the obviously, the latest software here is Ultimaker Cura 4.11.0. Um, so first thing we want to do is open that. Pretty simple. It's just a slicing software. I'm not going to get into much of the STL files. You're you're basically going to have your STL file or OBJ files. There's several other files that uh, they can read. Um, you can move move it around. Right mouse button is rotate. Um, the mouse wheel zoom in and out, and you can click the mouse wheel here to move it around. So that's pretty much all you need. Now on our machines, generally speaking, we will be hooked up to the network, but you have all kinds of different materials you can select from. Right now, we're just gonna, you know, keep it, a, we'll just use the this as a the setup. It's set up for a black ABS and the extruder number two is a natural PVA. Um, there's several different ways you can do this. Um, I'm going to show you the easiest way. We're just going to use a USB file. So I'm going to kind of minimize this here. You'll be able to see I have a baby Groot here file. You can get these. Uh, this can be from your OneDrive, Teams, wherever, USB file. Easiest way, you can either file, open files. I like to just go drag and drop. Boom, loads it. Go back to full screen, zoom in here, and you can see see what this is. This is actually a it's a baby group, but it's a planter. It's made to uh, plant something in there, a little flower or whatnot. I'll go through some of the few settings you can go through. Here you can click on the object. You can move it, scale it. Uh, say you want a uniform scale it, we can scale it up. Obviously way too big, but you can make a really big one. Let's just leave it like that. You can rotate. Um, mirror image, if you're making uh, mating cords or whatnot. Here's per model settings. Um, depending on the mesh type, stuff like that. There's different settings that you can play with here. Support blocker if there's an area you don't want support. So basically, this is showing here the red areas where it might need support. Support material. We're not going to use support in this, but you're not going to see the print. I'm just showing you how to use the slicer. Here's where when you select here, what's, what uh, nozzle you want to use, what extruder. We have two extruders on the Ultimakers. Generally speaking, number two is for... Support material number one is for the main material, but you can also set this up to where support or the number two material is a different color. So you can print two different colors. Um, so that's the main settings when you go in here and you get into uh, the print settings here. Um, and there's different profiles. Usually we recommend using what is. Um, Available, you know, right here. Obviously, 0 0.06 millimeters is the finest, up to 0.2, which is the uh, coarsest. Now, this is going to be the quickest setting. This is going to be the fastest or the, the slowest setting, but the finest detail. Um, it kind of gives you ideas here on, like, this is visual. Obviously, 0 0.06 is going to be the best visual. And when you hover, like if you hover over anything, it'll tell you what the infill does. Gradual infill kind of tells you what it does there. Support material, like I said, we're not going to use support material. If we were, we would select number two, and it would generate that. It doesn't show it here. Maybe in another video, I'll show you uh, where we would use support material and how that works. Uh, bed adhesion, I do not like using bed adhesion because generally – just for me, it doesn't work out. I just don't like it. It just doesn't. This this um, dark gray area here would be a small layer of 
um, filament or whatever you want to call it, whether it be nylon, PLA, ABS, whatever you're using. Sometimes you have to use that. Um, you can't get into the custom settings. Generally speaking, 0.1 to 0.15 is, is generally good enough for what you want to do. Um, you can get into some of the some of the uh, the custom setting like wall thicknesses you can change just depending on what you're doing what the project is um i did a little project the other day that was just a little part that didn't need i needed it to be a hundred percent infill so back here where i used a hundred percent infill so there's no let me see if i can show you that on this so we'll rotate that around let me slice this and I'll close that. And it does take quite a bit of processing power to slice, but it's not like at the end of the world, it takes a couple of minutes. And now it's going it, to, it'd take a little longer to be inside at 100% infill. So whenever I did that, say I can print via cloud or I can save to a disk, which is a USB key or whatever. So this particular print showing with 100% infill, three days, 20 hours, and two minutes. That's 503 grams of filament, which is a lot because that's filling every everything in there. So let me go to preview. Let me see if I can process this and see how it works. Let me see if I can make it work. So there's 1,363 layers. And I'm not sure if my computer will. So, yeah, it's kind of shows you the layers there. Yeah, see how choppy it gets. So, I mean, it is literally filling. There is no gap. It is 100% in fill. So, I'm going to go back. I'm going to change that. I'm going to go back here and go to, let's just go to normal 20% in fill. So the last was 503 grams. Um, and let me see what this did. Just taking it to 20%. 20% is pretty normal. Uh, <laughs> Pretty sure I'm using a lot of my processing power, and I, I have a, um, a a ThinkPad with a with an i7, I think 16 gig of uh, memory here. So that took it from three days to one day nine hours, which is pretty, you know, pretty impressive. So that's a 20% infill here, and if you look close, see how I did the little triangles of the infill. So it changed it from 100% infill. And back whenever I was talking about these settings here, these custom settings, uh, the walls, you know, you can change the wall thickness. Well, see how this is 1.3 millimeter. That's this 1.3 millimeter. Uh, you can even do a wall line count. So like line count here, one, two, three, four, that's the four lines. Um, you can change the speed infill uh, the material temperature you can change the material this it's pretty cool you can really change a lot of stuff and getting into like i was talking earlier let me see if i can make this yeah there we go uh when you get into the speed the travel the cooling most of that stuff is really figured out you know you don't have to mess with it much um the build plate adhesion i have a small printer a little ender 3 at home that you really have to it's it's different this is this ultimaker both of our ultimakers use are use glass beds and stuff like that um you can do several things to help print adhesion to the bed if you're having problems for one using glue stick all over you know wherever there's a um where your prints at but you can also do several different things here i'm just gonna i'm gonna scroll through these real quick see if it'll no, let's do this. So there, I'll let you read that. Different options that help to improve both priming your extrusion adhesion to the build plate. Brim adds a single layer to the flat area around the base of your model to prevent warping. Raft adds a thick grid with a roof below the model. Skirt is aligned printed. So my Ender 3 at home 
uses uh, the best way is the um let's see i think it is um, build plate the raft the raft is what i use at home and then you get into your dual extrusion settings and stuff like that um And you can go through all these settings and, and then there's your, this is your extruder one. This is your extruder two. Generally speaking, I never get away from uh, the general settings here. If I'm doing a rapid prototype that's quick, if I was doing this here, like actually doing this, it's already proven. I'd probably come down in here to the finer setting and make a, um, a finished quality product because you know, you're not going to have problems, but when you're doing like a, a prototype or some kind of little thing that you really just want to print it out as quick as you can to see how it's going to work, see how it's going to look. I'll usually go up into here. Now there are uh, there are different nozzles um, for the Ultimakers. Like um, well, I think we're running the 0.4 millimeter nozzles right now. That's generally what you're going to run most of the time. We do have some 0.8 millimeter nozzles. If you're wanting to do like a really, really rough draft, you can probably get up into once we turn those, plug those in, your Ultimaker is pretty, um, pretty straightforward. Like it knows what you're doing. When there's a problem, it'll stop, stuff like that. So if I put a 0.8 nozzle, uh, a hot end, as they call it, um, you could probably print up here in the 0.4 and take a, a, a 17 minute part down to a, maybe a, um, uh, let's just say eight, you know, an eight or nine minute part. If you're just trying to do rapid prototyping for looks, feel, stuff like that, and then get into that. So um, when you're hooked up to our network, if you are using one of our computers in our network, um, generally we will have uh, set up here like this Ultimaker 1. We have Ultimaker 2. It'll have a Quay uh, in the queue, you know. If there's several jobs in the queue, whatever people lined up, but basically, so any change we make here, we'll uh, change that to point two. And I would always recommend on a 20% infill and I'll go ahead and slice that. And let's see. And this also, you got to realize that's pretty big. That's probably eight inches or so, eight, eight or so inches wide. Um, well, right here, you do the math. This is how big it is in millimeters. So, and then, so now when we put it to a point two, you got a 22 hour print. So, and 192 grams versus 503 on the finest setting. Um, and then you can save to a disc. And this is set up for the Ultimakers. Boom, you can save to your USB, whatever. And then take that file. Um, and bring that into the lab and set up. We'll have probably Fabman IO or whatever to uh, um, to line up uh, your time frame on when you're going to use the equipment, stuff like that. And you can come in and do that. Also, I have to say Ultimaker Cura is free. Um, so it's a free software you can download to uh, on any, any computer you have at home or whatever. Or if you don't have one, we can... Um, we, we have several computers here that we can supply with you, uh, supply for you to, uh, to use if you don't have one at home. But, um, we also will have several different, um, like fusion 360. Um, you can use Tinkercad, uh, SketchUp. There's all kinds of different softwares to use for the 3d software to make an STL file or, or an OBJ file or something like that. So, um, anyway. I think that's it for this particular video. Um, but what I would do here, uh, if I was in the lab, I would basically print over print via cloud and just hit a button. And if the Ultimaker number one was ready, so we have two here, or if Ultimaker one was ready, it would just uh, print and it would start printing. It would load up which material, because it has a material station. If you look up the S5, I believe it has... Uh, um, I'm going to get this wrong. I know I think it's got like six stations, the different types of material you can hold in each one. So automatically loads each one out. Um, 
as you can see we only have two three four five here so um, I think it's six but um, I think that's it for this video so um, thanks for watching and if you have any questions you can get with us in the lab or come by the lab and uh, uh, we'll be able to help you out